Okay, this one will be pretty quick. We're gonna talk about discount factors and do some problems with present value and future value. So if we wanna determine a present value, let's say we have a future value and interest rate in some time, we have some formulas that will tell us what the present value should be. So first of all, we can say that the future value is just going to be the present value times one plus your interest rate. In other words, it's increasing. So if we do some manipulation on the formula, we end up with the present value being the future value divided by one plus I, or in other words, multiplied by one over one plus I. Now, this one over one plus I is referred to as the discount factor, and you sometimes see it written as V. So you might see this as a future value times V is equal to the present value. So depending on whether we have a simple interest or compound interest, we're going to have slightly different formulas. So the future value is equal to the present value times one plus I times T for simple interest. And this will be times one plus I raised to the T for compound interest because it's exponential. And if we do some manipulation on this formula, we can also get the present value. So for simple interest, it's going to just be the future value times one over one plus I T. We can't really use the discount factor in this formula, but for compound interest, we can. So the present value is equal to the future value times one over one plus I raised to the T. And this would just be the same thing as saying uh, V to the T in this case. In other words, our discount factor. So uh, the reason for that is because it would be one to the T raised over one plus I to the T, but one to whatever power is just equal to one. So that's why we can do that substitution with our discount factor V. So we're just gonna do some sample problems here. So suppose we have to pay off $25,000 in five years. We earn an effective annual interest rate of 5%. How much principal must we deposit to meet that obligation in simple interest and compound interest? So first of all, if we just write out what we have, we know we have to pay off $25,000. So that's going to be our future value. So that's gonna be 25,000. Our time is going to be five years. That's five periods here and an effective annual interest rate of 5%, that's going to be 0.05 for interest. And what we need to find is our present value. So let's take a look at simple interest first. Okay, so we can just use our formula here. PV is equal to our future value times one over one plus I times T, which is just going to be 25,000 times one plus one. Okay, so I times T is going to be 0 0.05 times five, which is just 0 0.25. So we're just taking 25,000 and we're dividing it by 1.25 to get the present value. And if we put that into a calculator, $25,000 divided by 1.25, that's, I probably didn't need a calculator for that. Uh, but that's just going to be $20,000. So if we're getting 5% interest per year, simple interest, we need $20,000 in order to get up to 25,000. Now, what if we do compound interest? So it's the same process, but the math just gets a little bit more irritating simply because we have to do some, well, some roots in this case. Okay. So in terms of compound interest, uh, our present value is going to be equal to $25,000, which is our future value times our discount factor. So it's just going to be one over one plus 0 0.05. And we're raising it to the five in this case. So uh, what we can do is just plug in the numbers in this case. So I'm not even going to simplify it any further. We're just going to do our multiplication. So that's going to be divided by one plus 0 0.05 raised to the power of five. And that's gonna give us a total of $19,588.15. So if we use compound interest, we get to invest about $412 less than simple interest to get the same amount of money after five years. A second problem. Suppose we deposit $350. Okay, so that's our present value. It is 350 and it accumulates to $500 in five years. So that is our future value is 500, and our T is just equal to five in this case. 
what is the rate of simple interest and compound interest to achieve this? So again, we're going to break this up into simple and compound. And what we're solving for in this case is I, so we're just gonna do some manipulation of our formulas here. So for simple, future value, which is 500, is equal to the present value, 350, times one plus I T. Well, we don't know what I is, but we know that T is five. So that's gonna be the same thing as 350 times one plus five I. So now we can just do some manipulation. So 500 divided by 350 is equal to one plus five I, which means that 500 over 350 minus one is equal to five I. We just divide both sides by five again, then we're going to get our interest rate. So our interest rate in this case, if we put this in, it might be a little bit annoying if you're not using a financial calculator to do this. So 500 divided by 350 minus one divided by five is going to give us a total of 0 0.0857. So about an 8.6% interest rate if we do simple interest. Now, what about compound interest? Same thing, we're just gonna use our formula here. So our future value of 500 is equal to our present value of 350 times one plus i. Again, we don't know what i is, but we know it's raised to the five because our years are five. So we can do a very similar thing here. So 500 divided by 350 is one plus i to the five. Now, in order to solve for i, we need to take the fifth root of 500 over 350 to give us one plus i on the right. So we're just gonna subtract one from that. And that's going to be our interest rate. So we can do 500 divided by 350 raised to the power of one fifth and then subtract one from that. And our value for our interest is going to be 0 0.0739, which is an effective interest rate of 7.4% roughly. So we need an interest rate of like 1.2% less in order to make this progress in five years if we're using simple, if we're using compound interest rather than simple interest. Now here's one last problem, which is a little bit more interesting because we're doing something a little bit different here. So at what rate of interest, so we don't know what I is, will $3,000, so our present value is $3,000, uh, invested in I per quarter, compounded quarterly, accumulate to $7,000 in six years. So our future value is $7,000. Now for our T, we might think that it's six, but if T is equal to six, that means there's six periods. But what's actually happening here? Well, for six years, we're compounding our interest four times per year. So what that means is that we're actually gonna have 24 total periods here. So the T that we should be working with is 24 because we're doing it quarterly and we have six years. So that's the same thing as six times four. Now we can do the same thing that we did for each of these before. We'll take a look at simple and we'll take a look at compound to see what interest rates we're going to need. Okay, so for simple interest, we have our present value which is $3,000 is equal to the future value, which is going to be $7,000 multiplied by one over one plus I T. So one over one plus 24 I. Now we're going to have to get 3,000 over 7,000 is equal to one over one plus 24 I. Now we want our one plus 24 I to be on the top. So we're just going to flip everything around, which means that 7,000 over 3,000 is equal to one plus 24 I. Now we can just subtract one from each side, which to save a little bit of space in writing, I'm just going to do this here. So seven thirds minus one is equal to 24 I, and then we can divide both sides by 24. So if we put this into our calculator, this is basically uh, seven thirds minus one, and then we divide the whole thing by 24. And what are we going to get from this? Well, we're going to get four thirds divided by 24. So four thirds divided by 24, which is the same thing as 1 18th, 
which is about 0 0.055, and this is going to repeat. Now, what if we do compound interest? Well, compound interest, very similar process. So $3,000 or present value is going to be equal to $7,000 or future value times one over one plus I, but this time we're raising it to the 24th. Good luck ever doing this without a calculator. So just to do some simplifications, 3 sevenths is going to be equal to one plus one, uh, one over one plus I raised to the 24. We'll have to do some flipping again. So that way we get our one plus I to the 24 in a numerator. And now we're going to take the 24th root of each of these. So the 24th root of 7 thirds so minus 1 after is going to be equal to i. So if we put in 7 divided by 3 raised to the power of 1 over 24, because there's 24 periods, and we subtract 1, what is our i going to be in this case? It is going to be 0 0.0359 which is an effectively a 3.6% interest rate with compound interest. So here we have like a 1.9% difference if we're looking at simple versus compound interest. If you have quarterly compounded interest uh, compared to yearly compounded interest, you'll get a little bit more because you're compounding every period, which means every single uh, three months in this case, uh, you're starting with a new base value that interest is being added to. So. Again, the, the messages in all of these videos in your first thing, compound interest is always better.